All right, one, two, three. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining our webinar today on real world AI supercharging engineer productivity. We have with us today, Orman and Asaf. Um, so take it away guys. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Isabella. So uh, so maybe a little bit before we start, this is uh, uh, a quote by Bill Gates. I think everybody realized that ever since the kind of like maybe a little bit surprising launch of ChatGPT and the ability to ask any question uh, and really have a conversation, we all realized that uh, this thing is going to be um, it's going to be kind of like a revolution of how we interact with data, and uh, it's not just a just a feature or anything. It's just going to be a different way of of conversing with the data as opposed to uh, uh, just asking a query and waiting for the answer to, to happen. Uh, so this is uh, kind of like our view about uh, Gen AI. Uh, we're gonna take it away with how we see it impacting observability and how we see it kind of like supercharging engineering productivity, which uh, observability is a big part of it. Um, kind of like uh, going through today's agenda. So a little bit of an introduction uh, and pause just to get your familiarity with what, what we're gonna talk about. We're going to talk about uh, trends in AI and the perception. Uh, we're going to talk about the observability IQ assistant as, as well as including a demo of how it looks like. Uh, we're going to talk about RCA, which is the root cause analysis uh, that we are going to be launching uh, later on this year. Uh, and also talking about what the future holds and how we handle security and privacy with uh, Gen AI. So uh, a little bit of introduction. So uh, Armin, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, uh, Isabella Asaf. Uh, my name is Armin Marateb. Uh, I'm a senior DevOps at uh, Sama. At uh, in my company, um, my company is working on uh, image annotation and video annotation. And recently, we also work on generative AI uh, workloads as well. Um, as a DevOps, um, so I work to automate the pipelines uh, and also having um, our infrastructure as code. Uh, and a part of that, uh, my work is also related to SRE, which basically we mainly do the troubleshooting and um, consulting the devs uh, and helping them to resolve their uh, coming issues. Um, so we also have the monitoring and alerting system in place, and we use uh, Logs.io for uh, gathering the logs and also analysis uh, of the logs and uh, monitoring our production and also staging environments. Great. Thank you very much, and thanks for being here. Uh, and my name is Asaf. I am the CTO and co-founder of Logs.io. Uh, happy to be here. Uh, very excited about our journey when it comes to AI in general and, and generative AI uh, in particular. Uh, so Isabella, do you want to take this uh, poll away? Yeah, awesome. So we wanted to poll the audience today on how often they're using AI at work. Um, so please take a minute to answer the question here. All right, so about 15 more seconds here. Um, if you haven't answered, please take a second too. Thanks. Great. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, helping out with the poll. So uh, a little bit of a kind of like uh, um, what we see in AI, kind of like the trends and perception around this, also where it doesn't uh, where it doesn't belong. So, I think part of the the thing that we're seeing the benefits of AI is kind of like doing a lot of the manual tasks and saving time on on stuff that is mundane, especially when looking through the data or sifting through the data. Uh, the other thing that we see it as a benefit is uh, is generative AI, the ability to converse with the data. So basically ask a question, you got the response, and now you can ask a follow-on question. So instead of like revising your query, which is what you used to do, you can say, 
okay, I need to see all the errors that are happening. This is not an error. Give me something from this server or a different. give me something from a different application. And you can continue the conversation until you get what you want. Basically, continue to refine uh, the queries that are continue to refine the discussion with the data. Um, and uh, so this is kind of like what we see. Some places where we feel it's a little bit overhyped uh, is obviously these models are being, being developed in a rapid, fast pace. Uh, some of them require a lot of uh, tuning when it comes to asking the right question. Um, and uh, and I think this is kind of like where we come into play as, uh, as Logs.io. Uh, I also th think that there is a lot of uh, uh, expectation from generative AI to do a lot of the things that basically it cannot do. Um, and, uh, and again, it's our job to make sure that it adheres with the mission and, and it actually addresses what, uh, what it can do. Um, this is kind of like where we see, we do see it uh, all over organization going from the way organization manage their information, whether it's for BI, for observability, for engineering, uh, the ability to accelerate development with uh, different Gen AI capabilities that, that help with that, uh, the ability to automate manual task or mundane task like writing tests and testing systems. Uh, and, and obviously a big part of it is the ability to troubleshoot very, very complex environments. One of the things we see in observability is that the complexity of environment continue to grow uh, and beyond the point that observability system with more and more dashboard and more alerts are going to be any helpful. So there need to be any, some kind of like a shift in uh, paradigm of how to, run, how to do observability in production environments. Uh, is they it's no longer uh, possible or feasible to understand all the hundreds or thousands of graphs that are represented in every organization. So we do see Gen AI taking a center stage in uh, in observability, obviously. Uh, a little bit about the ob uh, observability IQ assistant. Um, I would let Armin here kind of like weigh in and maybe talk about your experience with it and and what you what you discovered with it. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, as I said, a part of my job as DevOps is to uh, troubleshoot the issues that arrive, uh, especially incidents in production. Uh, so, um, with the incidents, how it works is we usually get an alert from the channels that we put in place, and right away we go and check the logs for that specific issue that we have, right? So, uh, in the like a traditional way, we go uh, apply the filters, uh, check the logs, which m m most of the time comes with a lot of noise, I would say. Uh, and we need to check them uh, um, and see if like that is really related or not, and finally decide on what can be the issue. Uh, the way that observability IQ help is uh, kind of works as uh, assistant to the DevOps and SRE engineers, I would say uh, that you communicate with it, uh, tell it like I would like to have uh, the logs of the uh, last 24 hours on the specific production environments that caused that specific errors. And it goes and checks the logs, it reduces the noise and provides you with what you really need in an SRE to troubleshoot your error, right? So for me, that's how we usually uh, use it at our company. Uh, that basically helps us to uh, finding the root cause of the issues faster, and it reduces a lot of the manual processes that we were doing before. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, it helps to uh, troubleshoot faster and more precise. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's uh, that's great feedback, and I think uh, a big part of our mission is again to to help organization troubleshoot quicker and get more optimized and spend more time in the day kind of like creating automation and making the system more resilient as opposed to chasing issues uh, and running through uh, different types of data. Uh, so uh, so let me kind of like show you a little bit of the demo and how... Uh, 
So we have added observability IQ here. So this is Logs.io and this is the uh, the Explore, uh, which we've released uh, a couple of months ago and which is the new way of looking through logs and sifting through them in a more efficient way. Uh, there's two things that I, I do want to show you here. One of them is the observability IQ, which we've talked about and Armin mentioned. Uh, this is a way that you can start conversing with the data. So we've started by giving you suggestions for questions that you can ask, but you can ask any question that you want. Uh, this goes directly into uh, into Gen AI, it goes into a model, uh, and now I'm asking you to kind of like uh, identify top errors in the system based on the log data and just suggest uh, uh, potential mitigation strategies. It takes it some time because what we're doing is we're packing all the information that exists here. We're using a model to uh, to run through it, and then we're asking the Gen AI. So you can see the uh, kind of like what is the conclusion, what is the recommendation. In any case, that I don't want to read through uh, through all of this, I can I can ask a follow-on question, say, hey, make it shorter, and uh, I make it shorter and basically it runs through the data and just like summarizes it for me so I can examine it and I cannot spend the time reading uh, through all of it. The beautiful thing of it, even if we didn't reach the right conclusion, this analysis is very thoughtful. So yeah, the main issue is connectivity problem, front-end service causing error and downtown service failure, networking issue, investigate creative issue. And this is basically the root cause of what we found. So this is the IQ assistant, as opposed to the old way of like, I'm going to look at the log, I'm going to filter out the exception, I'm going to see what happened in the proximity of it, I'm going to remove all the non-necessary logs from the system, now I can just ask a question, and that generative AI actually looks at the logs and analyzes them for me. Uh, the next level of iteration for Gen AI is the root cause analyzer. So uh, for every exception that exists, uh, this is a feature that we're going to be releasing later on this year. We can run uh, a root cause analysis with it. What we're doing in this, uh, and this is going to take maybe a little bit longer, we are asking the generative AI and saying, this is the exception. You go and figure out what action do you need to take in order to understand what uh, what the problem is, and go ask these questions. So, as opposed to ask preparing a bunch of pre-made questions, we're actually just handing off the exception and saying, "Go ahead uh, and uh, and and you figure out which question should be running and uh, and what to do with it." So it's creating steps, and you can see that the analysis is saying, "Hey, the user is providing exception." Uh, this happened 341 times between the different uh, times. And these are the action that I should do. I should search for other exception and log around the same time frame. I should look at the logs indicating a connection issue. I can check if there are any deployments or config changes uh, around this time. So now it's going and and uh, and asking asking all these questions, like do I get any additional error logs in this? Uh, and continue to ask more questions about what is the recent changes to open telemetry, uh, what is the verifi verification of all of it, and this continue an analysis of saying these are the environment, this is the pods that exist uh, in the environment, this was the deployment that were made, and this is the kind of like the collector or networking related configuration, uh, and 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 obviously it's gonna hopefully it's gonna reach the kind of like a good conclusion of what the issue is. These are the steps that usually a DevOps person would take. It would look at see errors in the proximity. It would look at the logs indicating connection. This thing take can take hours of people that have like very deep knowledge with the system, uh, just in order to analyze what's going on here. Uh, and this is all stuff that's being done by by generative AI. It reached the conclusion based on the exception the log provided. The root cause appears to be a connectivity issues between front end currency and currency service, open telemetry collector uh, services unavailable, front end services repeated errors, uh, and this is kind of like what it found uh, in this. So verify the open telemetry connector configuration, check the front end currency service configuration, look network policy, and basically it's giving us all the reasoning. Uh, in a word to continue to uh, to look from here. And uh, and this is the, the beauty of it. So instead of an engineer spending hours on trying to understand what's going on, basically uh, the Gen AI here 
goes around and look for the answer and ask more and more question until it reaches a conclusion of what it found uh, here. So this is the observability AQ, and uh, which is going to be released towards the end of the year uh, or later on this year, uh, and the observability AQ and the RCA. So this was a kind of like a very short demo and uh, this, the observability IQ is already in production. So uh, happy to, if you take advantage of it, uh, we're happy to kind of like get some feedback on it. Uh, and, uh, and like I said, the RCA is right now in beta. If you guys want to take advantage and participate in the beta, you can contact us. Uh, a little bit about security and privacy. So this is the major concern when it comes to Gen AI. It's like, who can see the data? Uh, is my data being used to train the model? Um, so obviously, uh, privacy and security is top of mind for us. This is something that has been around from the beginning of the company. Um, so we have a very ethical and secure way of handling the data. We're using third-party services that are committed to uh, privacy, to security, and to uh, and to make sure that. Uh, data is not being used to uh, to train the model and uh, the data actually stays within uh, uh, within the logs io environment and uh, within this configuration uh heading to the future of ai so some of the things that uh, um, that exist here and what our vision is that eventually um, organization would need to define uh, alerts and would need to define any dashboards. Uh, basically, the Gen AI is going to scan the code, the logs, and the code all the time. Whenever it's going to find something wrong, either in the metrics, in the logs, in the traces, it would just run the root cause analysis. It would connect automatically to your uh, GitHub repository or to the code repository. Already implement changes and, uh, and issue pull requests so you can approve them or configuration changes, and everything is going to be done uh, kind of in an automated way. We're not there yet, uh, but as a vision, this is kind of like where we feel it's going. Um, I don't know, Armin, if you want to weigh in on kind of like where you see uh, AI going and either on observability and whatever else you're developing. Yeah, sure. Uh, so as I said, the current way that we use um, AI in our work, especially for monitoring, is we're using it as a virtual assistant that takes most of the labor and provide us with uh, like a options to take actions. Uh, well, that is complementary with the RCA feature that you just presented. Uh, but um, I was thinking of like some features that we might have in near future, especially related to proactive issues detection and prediction, because now the systems, basically you have the incident and then you go and check uh, what is the root cause, right? But I would see it at some point we can predict based on the behavior of uh, that AI will learn about your company or your system and the logs that it can be detected and predicted beforehand. Um, so that will help to have, um, let's say, scaling your system accordingly and having in place some measures that can prevent that issue coming. Um, automated root cause analysis that you just mentioned is a great feature. Uh, intelligent noise reduction, it already helps on that, but it would uh, be great to have it fine-tuned uh, gradually uh, like as the AI develops and the algorith algorithms get better and better. Uh, that self-healing system just take action based on what is happening and what is the decision uh, on the RCA side. That would be great. Uh, and also uh, the last point is related to integration to other AI-based applications. I know there are lots of uh, people around the world that they uh, like have their applications and plugins and stuff like that that can be integrated so people can just choose based on what they uh, need uh, to analyze their logs and add more, like make it more powerful. Yeah, I think these are uh, amazing features to have. Some of them were already uh, um, kind of like implemented, like the root cause analysis and, um, and we shared the vision about the self healing system. 
I think the other major benefit that we can see from AI is also a cost reduction because today organizations save a lot of data unnecessarily for a very long time. Uh, it can be a week, two weeks, it can be a month. Uh, and just because they want to have to keep the data warm, they want to be able to search it for the whole week, they want to be able to troubleshoot it. But if you run it in the background and you let AI run through it and understand it and look at the trends, then you can definitely leverage a lower cost storage uh, uh, capabilities and, and reduce the cost of observability significantly uh, and obviously improve the efficiency of it. And uh, I think we share your vision about... Um, uh, proactive issue detection because uh, I think uh, the, the ability of Gen AI to just look at the system and see what changes and correlate it with deployment, correlate it with the metrics, correlate a lot of data that usually doesn't have to, uh, it takes time to correlate. It can run every few minutes, every hour and just compare the differences and see what's going on. And then if something changes, obviously run the root cause analysis and, and alert accordingly. Um, so yeah, uh, so thank you very much for uh, participating. Is there any question that uh, that were uh, that were raised? Yeah, so I got a question here. I know that you touched on this a bit, um, but someone asked, what key areas are you prioritizing for enhancement of, in observability IQ? Yeah, I think the key areas that we're prioritizing in observability IQ is more and more connectivity. So connecting it to the metrics, connecting it to the traces, connecting it to the GitHub repository, connected to the Slack, eventually just reading all this information, the more information you feed it, the more capabilities uh, the Gen AI will have, the easier it's gonna be for, uh, for the algorithm to reach the right root cause analy analysis. So it's about connecting it and like, like Armin mentioned to more data sources and more even more AI capabilities uh, around it. So this is something that we're prioritizing. Okay, awesome. Um, and I also have another question here. So someone asked, how do I get access to the RCA beta? Um, I, I know you mentioned to reach out to us, but if there's any anything else that. Yeah, yeah it's a good question. I think, so, so obviously, um, I didn't mention it when we talked about kind of like the downside, but uh, the, the generative AI does its work, does its work. So there is no, there is very little ability of us to influence the results. We are working hard to make sure that we feed it the right information and it's in the right order and the, the questions are the right questions to do. We're always happy for feedback. So if you run into feedback and something that uh, on the observability IQ, which is already open to all, uh, please email us at team at logs.io. If you would like to participate in the RCA uh, beta, please uh, uh, email us at uh, team at logs.io and we'd be happy to include you and, uh, and, and get your feedback. Uh, I think this is gonna make, uh, make our story and our vision come to life quicker. So happy to do it and happy to for you to participate in the beta program. Awesome. So that's all the questions that we have right now um, that I see here. But if we didn't get to any of your questions or you have any more feedback, feel free to reach out to team at logs.io, like Asaf mentioned, or your dedicated account manager as well if, if you're a customer. Um, and we'll be happy to discuss any of this further with you or get you on a call. Um, thank you so much today for this webinar, Armin. We really appreciate you joining the team here today. And thank you so much, Asaf, for, for giving another webinar like you always do. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Armin. We really, really appreciate it. Yep.